NASA's acting administrator just dropped a bombshell. Each Artemis mission costs $4.2 billion, making a sustainable moon program impossible. While America struggles with this crushing reality, China races ahead. But here's what most people don't realize. Elon Musk revealed the genius fix for this exact problem back in 2017, a radically different approach that could revolutionize how we reach the moon. When NASA's acting administrator Shaw Duffy dropped those brutal numbers, $4 billion a launch, he wasn't just complaining about costs, he was admitting that America's moon program is built on a foundation that makes long-term success mathematically impossible. But here's what most people don't realize about this crisis. It stems from a single catastrophic design decision made over a decade ago. The space launch system is essentially a $4.2 billion fireworks show. Every component, the massive orange core stage, twin solid rocket boosters, upper stage, gets destroyed after one use. Imagine if airlines had to build a new Boeing 777 for every flight, then crash it into the ocean upon landing. That's NASA's current approach to reaching the moon. The numbers tell the story. NASA's exploration upper stage has exploded from $962 million to $2.8 billion while running six years behind schedule. Congress is now demanding alternatives, but every option reveals how trapped NASA really is. Blue Origin's New Glenn upper stage would make the rocket too tall for the vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center, requiring millions in modifications to a structure that's been launching rockets since the Apollo era. And here's where things get interesting. The technical problems keep multiplying. Artemis One's heat shield suffered unexpected erosion during lunar re-entry, with over 100 spots losing material as Orion slammed into Earth's atmosphere at 40,000 kilometers per hour. Each fix adds months to the timeline, while China advances methodically toward their own lunar landing. The Centaur 5 alternative would require rebuilding launch towers and redesigning core stage interfaces. Every solution creates new million-dollar problems, like trying to fix a house by rebuilding the foundation while people are still living inside. But this engineering nightmare has an elegant solution that was hiding in plain sight. And here's what few people realize. Elon Musk revealed this exact fix years before NASA even admitted they had a problem. At the 2017 International Astronautical Congress, Elon Musk presented what seemed like an impossible vision, sending 100 people to the moon using a single, fully reusable spacecraft. While NASA was committing billions to their throwaway rocket approach, Musk was designing something that would make their entire strategy obsolete. Think of NASA's current plan like a cross-country move where you hire three different companies, one truck to get your stuff to a warehouse, a plane to fly it across the country, then another truck at your destination. SpaceX's approach, one vehicle that drives door to door, then drives itself back for the next customer. The technical elegance is breathtaking. NASA's Artemis missions require an entire fleet working in perfect coordination. SLS rocket, Orion capsule, multiple Starship tankers for refueling, and a specialized human landing system. One failure anywhere in this chain strands astronauts in the most hostile environment imaginable. SpaceX's original Starship concept eliminates this complexity entirely. One vehicle refuels in Earth orbit, flies directly to the moon, lands on the surface, and returns astronauts safely using its own heat shield and aerodynamic control surfaces for a vertical landing back on Earth. No complex orbital rendezvous. No single points of failure stringing together multiple spacecraft. But here's the detail most people overlook. This wasn't just about technical superiority. It was about recognizing that sustainable lunar exploration requires economic sustainability. At $4.2 billion per mission, NASA can afford maybe one flight per year. SpaceX's reusable approach could potentially cut costs by 95%, enabling dozens of lunar missions annually. And here's what's truly noteworthy about the competitive landscape. While NASA debates upper stage alternatives and fixes heat shield problems, China advances with methodical precision. They're not burdened by congressional budget battles or public failure analysis. Every month NASA spends on redesigns is another month closer to watching Chinese astronauts claim the lunar high ground. 
The economic implications extend far beyond national pride. The first nation to establish permanent lunar presence will control access to resources potentially worth trillions, rare earth elements, helium-3 for future fusion reactors, and the strategic advantage of operating from the ultimate high ground. We'll come back to this point later, but there's a remarkable twist in how NASA has actually adopted part of SpaceX's vision while missing its most revolutionary aspect. And this is where things get interesting. The barriers that once made this impossible are crumbling faster than anyone predicted. The transformation is accelerating beyond what traditional aerospace timelines would suggest possible. While NASA's Artemis II has been pushed to April 2026, with rocket stacking finally beginning in November 2024, SpaceX is preparing to launch Starship dozens of times this year alone. But there's a detail most people overlook that reveals the true magnitude of what's happening. NASA has already partially embraced Musk's vision by selecting Starship as their human landing system. But here's the catch. They chose a version specifically designed not to return to Earth. This Starship variant lacks heat shields, aerodynamic surfaces, and the structural reinforcement needed for atmospheric re-entry. It's essentially a one-way lunar taxi, tethered to NASA's expensive SLS architecture. Why would SpaceX accept this compromise? Because it's a stepping stone to something far more revolutionary. The fully reusable Starship that Musk originally envisioned, the one that could fly complete Earth to Moon to Earth cycles, is still in development. And here's what few people realize. When it arrives, it could make both NASA's SLS and China's Long March rockets obsolete simultaneously. The numbers are staggering. Early estimates suggest a fully reusable lunar Starship could reduce mission costs from $4.2 billion to perhaps $100 to $200 million. That's not just a cost reduction. It's a complete transformation of what's possible in space. Instead of carefully planned missions carrying four astronauts every few years, we could see monthly flights with larger crews and massive cargo deliveries. But the real story begins when you consider the learning rate advantage. Every SLS launch destroys all its hardware along with the lessons it could have provided for the next mission. Every Starship flight, even those that end in spectacular explosions, teaches SpaceX something new about how to improve the design. It's the difference between reading about riding a bicycle and actually getting on one hundreds of times. And here's what's truly remarkable about the timeline pressure. China's methodical progress isn't waiting for NASA to solve its cost problems or SpaceX to perfect reusability. Their lunar program advances with a systematic precision that put them on Mars and established their own space station. The window for American leadership is measured not in decades, but in years. What happens if this fully reusable system works as design? We're not just talking about returning to the moon. We're witnessing the potential birth of a true spacefaring civilization. The barrier between Earth and lunar surface could dissolve from prohibitive to routine, making lunar bases, mining operations, and permanent settlements economically viable for the first time in human history. The question that will define the next decade of space exploration isn't whether this transformation will happen. It's whether America will lead it or watch from the sidelines as others claim the ultimate frontier. This is exactly why Elon Musk revealed his lunar plan in 2017, years before NASA admitted their cost crisis. He wasn't just proposing a different rocket, he was exposing the fundamental flaw in disposable space architecture. What this means is that while NASA debates billion-dollar band-aids for an unsustainable system, SpaceX has been quietly building the infrastructure to make lunar travel as routine as commercial flights. We're witnessing more than just competing approaches to reach the moon. This represents the moment when space exploration transitions from government spectacle to economic reality. The nation that cracks the code of affordable, reusable lunar transportation won't just win a race. They'll control access to an entire world of resources and strategic advantage. And this is just the beginning. SpaceX's next major Starship tests are scheduled within months, while NASA's Artemis II approaches its April 2026 launch window. But here's what makes the coming year crucial. China's lunar program continues advancing on schedule, creating a timeline where American leadership isn't guaranteed. It must be earned through innovation, not just ambition. How do you think this cost revolution will reshape not just lunar exploration, 
but our entire approach to becoming a spacefaring civilization. Will reusable systems finally make space accessible to more than just superpowers? This is the kind of deep analysis we bring you here, connecting the technical breakthroughs to the bigger picture of human space exploration. If you want more insights into how today's space developments are shaping tomorrow's possibilities, you know where to find us. The next few years will determine whether humanity's return to the moon marks the beginning of true space colonization or just another expensive government program that fades into history. In 1969, NASA's Werner von Braun designed the exact Mars architecture SpaceX uses today. Reusable rockets, orbital refueling, multi-ship convoys, every major starship innovation, already mapped out 50 years ago. But here's what most people don't realize. Von Braun's plan solved critical problems that SpaceX is still struggling with. Here's the smoking gun. When you place Von Braun's 1969 Mars architecture next to SpaceX's Starship Blueprint, you're looking at virtually identical engineering solutions, just with different fuel types. Von Braun's nuclear shuttle system? Three cylindrical stages clustered together, outer boosters separate and returned for reuse via controlled return burns. Sound familiar? It's exactly Starship's booster catch system, except Von Braun designed it 50 years earlier. But here's what few people realize. Von Braun even calculated the exact same orbital mechanics SpaceX uses today. His departure window, November 12th, 1981. SpaceX's preferred windows follow identical Earth-Mars alignment cycles. Because physics doesn't change. Von Braun's nine-month transit time? Same as Starship's planned journey. The man literally wrote the playbook. And here's the kicker. Von Braun's payload calculations prove SpaceX didn't just copy the concept, they copied the math. His 726,000 kilogram Mars spacecraft versus Starship's 1,200,000 kilogram fully fueled. When you factor in nuclear propulsion's two times efficiency advantage, the payload ratios are nearly identical. This isn't coincidence, it's engineering plagiarism. But wait, there's more. Von Braun's Mars excursion module 8.8 meters high, 50,900 kilograms descent weight, designed for 30 to 60 day surface stays. SpaceX's Mars Starship variant, 9 meters diameter, similar mass budget, same mission duration. Even the landing approach matches atmospheric braking with parachutes and retro rockets. First major difference, artificial gravity. While SpaceX accepts that crews will arrive at Mars weakened after nine months in microgravity, Von Braun solved this in 1969. Connect two ships nose to nose, spin the 164 meter structure, instant artificial gravity. Why did SpaceX ignore this proven solution? We'll come back to this critical oversight. Second shocking parallel, redundancy planning. Von Braun designed two identical ships flying in convoy for rescue capability. SpaceX's original Mars architecture, multiple starships in formation flights. They're literally following his safety protocols. And here's what most people overlook. Von Braun calculated 950 Saturn V launches to assemble his Mars fleet. SpaceX claims they need hundreds of starship flights for Mars infrastructure. Same scale, same approach, same logistical reality. But the most damning evidence, Von Braun's propellant choice reasoning. He selected nitric acid slash hydrazine because it could be stored without refrigeration for three-year missions. SpaceX chose methane slash oxygen for the exact same reason. Long-term storage capability and Mars fuel production potential. But this is just the beginning. What's really surprising is why SpaceX chose to copy this specific 50-year-old plan when NASA had dozens of Mars studies to choose from. Here's where Elon Musk's true genius emerges. He didn't just randomly stumble onto Von Braun's architecture. He deliberately selected the one NASA Mars plan that could work with private funding and modern technology. Why this plan specifically? Because Von Braun solved the fundamental economic equation that killed every other Mars proposal. NASA's 1990s, Mars missions required $400 to $500 billion in government funding. Von Braun's reusable architecture 
updated with modern manufacturing, drops costs to under $100 billion. That's the difference between impossible and achievable for a private company. But here's what few people realize. Every other space company missed this connection. Blue Origin's lunar focus, Virgin Galactic's suborbital tourism, ULA's traditional expendable rockets. They're all competing in markets Von Braun had already moved beyond in 1969. SpaceX recognized that Mars colonization was the ultimate market, and Von Braun had already solved the technical framework. And here's the kicker about timing. NASA abandoned Von Braun's plan in 1972, not because it was technically flawed, but because it required sustained political will across multiple presidential administrations. Apollo succeeded because it had a deadline, beat the Soviets to the moon. Mars colonization needed a different motivation structure. Musk cracked this code by creating artificial urgency. Humans must become multiplanetary before catastrophic events threaten Earth civilization. It's brilliant marketing wrapped around Von Braun's engineering, creating the sustained funding source NASA couldn't maintain. First strategic advantage SpaceX gained, they could cherry-pick Von Braun's best ideas while discarding expensive elements. Nuclear propulsion? Replace with cheaper methane engines, except lower efficiency. Complex rotating habitats, skip artificial gravity, except crew health risks. Von Braun's government budget allowed luxury. SpaceX's private funding demands compromises. Second masterstroke, vertical integration. Von Braun's plan required coordination between NASA centers, contractors, and international partners. SpaceX builds everything in-house, eliminating the political complexity that killed the original program. But there's a detail most people overlook. SpaceX's innovation timeline perfectly matches their access to declassified NASA documents. The Starship concept emerged shortly after Von Braun's detailed technical specifications became publicly available through NASA's archives. Coincidence? Hardly. The competitive implications are staggering. While other space companies spent decades developing incremental improvements to existing rockets, SpaceX leapfrogged straight to the final architecture. It's like skipping from horse-drawn carriages directly to Formula One racing, because someone already designed the Ferrari 50 years ago. And here's what's truly noteworthy about the business model